Hi and welcome back to Plastic Models by a Regular Dude and my year-end review. I uh, got actually more models completed this year than I thought I did. Um, some of them, you know, I built them and just kind of forgot. But uh, I actually had a fairly decent uh, year as far as productivity goes. Um, I also tried a few new things, uh, techniques and products, and they seem to... Some of them were good, some of them not as good. I'll talk a little bit about it. And uh, the main focus here, I'll just kind of go through a uh, quick rundown and uh, video of the kits that I actually completed this year. <clears throat> and then I'll talk a little bit about the ones that I've had ongoing for a while that I'm nearing completion on. And then talk a little bit about uh, what's coming up for 2018. So let me change the camera angle, take a look at the uh, some of the things I've used this year and the kits I've completed. Alrighty then, <clears throat> let's talk about some of the products I've tried for the first time this year and what I think of. There may be more products, but I uh, can't think of them right now, so I'll come back to them later. So the first one I want to talk about, let's go with the, uh, to me, a MarkFit decal solution. Now normally, I use Solvacet. Been using it since the late 70s, mid-late 70s. And I really like it. It's worked really well. My old bottle just got, the solution got really weak in it, so I bought a new bottle. Works like a champ. But I wanted to try the MarkFit because I like, to me, as products for the most part. So I got it, I tried it. And I wasn't really that impressed. It didn't work as well to me as the Solva set does. Now, I just talked to a guy this morning on Facebook, and he described how he uses it and how he really likes it. And he's used them both, and he really speaks highly of this. So I'm going to give it another shot. And maybe it was just the particular decals I use it on because I only did it on one kit. So I'm going to try it again because I hate to buy stuff and not use it. So I'll try it and see how it works. And, you know, if it works great, if it doesn't, then... I don't know, maybe I'll give it away. But that was one item that I tried. Now one item that I tried that I really like is Steinal Res. Now some of this I may have tried, you know, last year, or you know, 2016, but I, these have just become cemented in my mind as items I'm going to continue to keep using. Because I've tried other stuff, and it seemed okay at first, and then just didn't really pan out in the end. Uh, Vallejo Surface Primer for one. Um, it works okay, but it just not as well as the Steinal Res. The Steinal Res is much more durable. It's sandable. It's really super easy to spray. Some people have trouble with it saying it's too thick or they have to spray it on a really super high pressure. I haven't had that problem yet. Um, maybe it's because I've always used the same pressure to spray stuff, but uh, it works really well. And I, I liked it enough that I got the gray. Now, probably getting probably the red uh, oxide for doing German armor primer for chipping and stuff like that but it works really well and the only you know downside to it and it's not really a downside it's just more of an inconvenience is it can be kind of difficult to clean out of the airbrush after you've done a lengthy spray session especially in the summer here in my dry climate uh, dry warm climate um, it can kind of skin over and be kind of tough but nothing that's insurmountable and it's well worth a little extra cleaning effort to use this stuff. So Steinal Res, really like it. I generally tend to stick to acrylic primers, although once in a while I'll use uh, the Tamiya in the rattle can. You know, if I just want to do a real quick job on it and I can do it outside. In the winter time, sometimes I can't do it outside or it's just too hot in the summer. So I like to spray in the house and that's where the acrylics come in. Um, Ultimate Weathering Wash by Ultimate Modeling Products. This one really, really is a good item. It's an item that I really like. Um, I especially like it for, and especially this color right here, for doing like dust and dirt deposits on armor, you know, in all the corners and recessed areas where dust would accumulate on the real vehicle. I feel I can get a really good effect with this, and it's durable, and it's not affected by clear coats if I decide to clear coat. Uh, pigments sometimes can change color, and um, this doesn't seem to do that as bad. So anyway, it's a really good product. I really like it. I'm going to get some more colors this year for doing other stuff. Uh, Mr. Surfacer, 
new item for me this year. I tried it on a uh, kit that I'll be talking about a little bit later. I like it for doing surface texture. And it just really, really gives you a nice uh, cast effect. Um, like on Sherman turrets and stuff, you know, some Soviet armor. <laughs> Real rough cast texture. You can really duplicate it well with this. Another new item. Um, 502 Abtailun oils. I've used oils for a little while now. And I used them a long time ago when I was modeling back in the 80s. And I like the way they work, um, and I would just use, you know, the stuff from the art stores like Windsor Newton, stuff like that. And they worked well, And um, but I'd heard really good things about these, about the pigments being a lot finer than the, uh, the stuff you could buy in the art store. So I decided to get a few tubes, tried them, loved them. They are super, super fine. There's no, sometimes when using the Windsor Newton stuff, you know, I'd get it all mixed up in my little cup with the thinner, and you know there'd be just a little hint of grit down in there I mean, it was nothing that messed up the model or anything like that but you could see it with this stuff you don't get that it's perfectly dissolved so the, i guess the uh pigments are super fine so i liked them enough that i got quite a few different colors for different weathering applications and for doing dot filters which i tried for the first time this year and streaking weathering stuff like that it works great really like it uh it was suggested that i use and i got some the um Abtailun odorless thinner to use with it and i've tried that and i've been continuing to use this odorless thinner and i can't really tell a difference between the two they both work well uh and maybe once i get you know my processes and my techniques more refined I'll notice a difference in the thinners but right now I don't so I use them both uh, another new item I got this year was this Neo for Iwata TRN1 trigger double action airbrush and this has been a game changer for me and the reason being is I had just a regular uh, Iwata double action airbrush and my manual dexterity is not what it used to be and sometimes, especially if I've been drinking coffee or something, uh, I don't have as much control with a regular double action airbrush. I just can't seem to manipulate the trigger and, you know, the flow in the air well enough without screwing stuff up. So I decided to try this one, and I have to say that it really works well. I like this a lot, and I can't wait to try it. I I've sampled it on some scraps and stuff but I can't wait to actually try it on a kit with uh, or more specifically a German aircraft kit doing modeling type camouflage uh, like I said I've done some practice stuff and this I can just I can really control it well with that trigger really well like it so really good airbrush really dig it I'm glad I got it so that's really all I can think of off the, off the top of my head of new products that I've tried this year. And, um, you know, they'll work well with the exception of this. But I, again, I'm going to try it again because I just don't like the waste stuff. So that's some of the products I've tried. So I'm going to move on now and talk a little bit about the kits that I've built. And I'll start with my oldest kit at the beginning of 2016. 2016. Talk about all the uh, kits I finished this year. And once I'm done with that, I'll talk a little bit about kits that I'm in the process of working on. Alright, next up was the Tamiya M8 Greyhound. This one, I really enjoyed this one. I've always wanted to build one. And I finally cracked and bought it and built it. And I, this was great. It was a fun kit. I actually did a figure for it that turned out halfway decent. I have ways to go. But it does have some interior to it, and I did add some extra stuff in the interior, like some of the uh, hydraulic lines, electrical lines, stuff like that. I uh, got an Archer decal set to do the dashboard, and uh, used Archer decals for the stars, not decals, dry transfers. 
and just I I really liked it. It's a great kit. Now this is the first kit though that I used the Ultimate Modeling Pro Products Weathering Wash. And this was the first one, so I, you know, kind of was experimenting a bit with it. But, you know, it left nice deposits all in the in the edges, in the wheels. Um, was able to do some spattering effects with it on the back and on the sides of the fenders. And it was just a fun kit. It was something I wanted to do that was, you know, pretty straightforward, easy to do. And uh, that I could practice with that particular wash. Next up is the Edward 10 ME or a BF 109 E4, and I did it in the markings of Franz von Vera, the one that got away. If you don't know about him, look him up on the internet. Very interesting story. But this is my first Edward kit, um, and I have to say that this kit was really, really nice. There's not one construction thing that gave me fits. Uh, it just went together really well. I really like the way this thing went together. Um, this is also the first one. That, well, this is really the first aircraft kit that I've built that I've really liked um, of, of getting back in the hobby. I've got a couple other kit, kits I did that I kind of look at those as preliminary in learning how to do certain things. But um, this one... I'm kind of proud, you know, I'm quite proud of this one actually. I, I like the way it turned out. The decals worked really well. I took my time with the paint. The paint worked well. Uh, the weathering, I used the, again, I used the Ultimate Modeling Products wash and I used the dark dirt and it just settled into the rivets and all the surface detail really well. Makes it pop without it being overboard. Um, I didn't come out with a quilt looking thing. I just, I really, I really enjoyed the way this one turned out. I actually did an aerial on this one, which I normally don't. Uh, I masked off the canopies and everything, the canopy and the windshield. And it just, you know, all around, I just really enjoyed this one. And I like the way it turned out. This one, this one was fun. First Edward kit, uh, first time doing this type of weathering on an aircraft, and it just, you know, everything worked out. No problems with paint. You know, that's pretty much all I can say. I just, I just really like the way it turned out, and it was a really fun, fun kit to build. This one here is the old, old Tamiya Panzer Kampfwagen. Panzer II. And this was the first kit that I did in my Plastic Models for Beginners series. Um, again, this one was a fun kit. It's very simple. That's why I picked it. They're very inexpensive. Another reason why I picked it. That way, you know, beginners could get into something. I don't have to worry about sinking a lot of money into it. Let's start learning basic techniques. And I basically went from step by step putting the whole kit together and that's another reason I chose this there's not a whole lot of parts because I didn't want the video to be like obscenely long but I did want to show step by step how I clean parts how I test fit and everything else and it worked out pretty pretty nicely and I did it in stages I did it this the build then I did it the paint then I went on to weathering and uh, you know I just kept it basic right out of the box no no modifications no additions, anything like that. That's for later series. But it turned out pretty nice. You know, I did the washes and I did the ultimate model wash for dust, did chipping, um, oil and fuel stains, rust techniques, you know, weathering the tracks, the whole thing. And it was just a, it was a really fun project. And I got some really good feedback on it. A lot of the uh, people that um, followed along actually enjoyed the videos and some of them even bought the kit and followed along on the video and 
were able to build a kit themselves. And that's kind of what I wanted to do is I wanted it to be a helpful thing for people just getting started or maybe wanting to go just a little bit further than just assembling and painting a kit. So the Panzer Kampfwagen Panzer II, which was the fourth kit I completed this year and the first kit for the beginner series. The next one, uh, kit number five that I finished is the, the old Tamiya SDKFZ222. And this was the second in the beginner series. And the reason I chose this one is again, it was a simple kit, but it had photo etch. And that's what I wanted to talk about was photo etch and some very basic uh, scratch building stuff. So that's what I wanted to accomplish with this kit. And I also picked this one because I wanted to do a gray vehicle and um, this was a good candidate. Now, as you can see, now again, I've kept this completely stock out of the box and geared for beginners. So there are some glaring things such as, you know, you can see the carrier film a bit, but that's mainly from not cleaning up my, uh, that clay wash as good as I should have but again I was keeping it basic and kind of so people know what to look for and what to look for as far as improving stuff so um, the covers here those were photo etched so and fairly simple so I figured it'd be a good introduction to photo etch um, again I used the Ultimate Modeling Products Wash, and I used uh, Vallejo Pigments. That was one of the other things I introduced the beginning model or two. And it was the Light Sienna Vallejo Pigments. So with each one of these, these beginner series builds, I'm trying to introduce another aspect of modeling to go in more of a, a little more intermediate and advanced type direction. Um, I got into chipping technique on these fuel cans and I also scratch built these can racks, these fuel can racks because the ones that come in the kit they're just it's the can and the straps are all molded in one one piece. There are no handles it's just like a big flat flat blob with a little lump right here for a cap so I wanted to show how you could Take a basic kit and improve it a little bit to make it look a little, a little nicer, a little more advanced. So I showed a step by step on how I scratch built these racks out of scrap uh, brass from um, photo etch frets. So that was that one. That was kit number five. Another beginner kit. Had a lot of fun doing it. Also came with an aluminum barrel. That was another reason that I chose this kit because you know instead of just being a kit barrel it's a metal turn barrel better detail and showed how I attach it using super glue or whatever so that was kit number five a lot of fun and kit number two of the models for beginner series so kit number six was to me as Matilda mark three slash four this is a new tooling of the Matilda and this one here um, I just was just a for myself build it wasn't for the beginner series or anything like that just something I wanted to build uh, a subject I've never tackled before I like British vehicles and I did this one in colors of a vehicle that would have been stationed in England during the war for training or whatever and it was kind of a brown, dark brown, kind of weirdish green color. And it turned out really dark, a little darker than I kind of had hoped, but it still looked pretty good. I liked it. But I really enjoyed the kit, although I did make a total bonehead rookie mistake. And the wheels, instead of gluing them to where they were this far apart, I had it flipped over backwards where they were this far apart. I don't know how I did it, but I did it, and I was a bonehead, and I admitted it on the video and showed what I did to fix it, because the inner road wheel was resting right on 
the guide portion of the inside of the track. These are spare tracks here, and this is the part that the wheel should be on either side. And it was right down the middle. So I ended up all those, I had to clip them off to where it would still sit flush. And if you look inside of here, you can see it, but since you can't see it from the outside, I didn't care because <laughs> I was going to finish that kit. So that's one way you can fix mistakes. And that's what I did. But anyway, it was a fun kit to build. Uh, did the driver figure, commander figure I was working on, but I didn't finish him because I didn't like the way he was turning out. He'll be one of my test subjects when I start working with the obtaining oils for painting faces and stuff. So anyway, that was kit number six. A lot of fun to me, a new tool. Kit number seven. This is a Dragon Black Label series kit which are kind of you know, I guess they don't make a bunch of them they do them for you know expos or whatever but this is the MBT 70 slash KPZ 70 it was a good joint deal between the US and West Germany at the time coming up with a main battle tank that would kind of share components and stuff like that for ease of allies working together so I don't normally do modern armor, but my good friend in Sweden Peter, sent me this kit just on a whim. He just said, hey, I'm probably not going to build this thing, so I'm going to send it to you so you can build it. And I was really, really stoked. It was a huge gesture, and it was especially nice because I had uh, gallbladder surgery at the time, so I was off work for... A week or two and uh, I just basically worked on this and this was the first thing I used dot filtering on um, it's a little conservative but I did it and it worked out well and I had a lot of fun doing it and I learned a new technique so this was a really really fun kit to build again I don't normally do modern stuff but I, I, I really enjoyed this and I went a little bit heavier on the mud and stuff than I normally do uh, with the Vallejo pigments, but I didn't get it too dirty because it's a tank that didn't actually go into production. It was just a uh, uh, some prototypes built for testing. So anyway, that's the MBT70 slash KPZ70 that my buddy Peter Person sent to me from Sweden. Really appreciate it. Had a lot of fun building it. And uh, it's kind of opened my eyes to modern armor a little bit more. Kit number eight was the M41 Walker Bulldog. And this kit, I experimented more with the dot filtering, but changing it up uh, to make different areas look a little bit different colors than others. Um, used the Ultimate Modeling Products uh, wash on it again, and I went a little heavier with the mud on this one quite a bit heavier actually and I talk about it in my video about this build but I you know got into some plaster pigments colors all that kind of stuff and put it on a lot heavier along with some vegetation type stuff stuck in there to give it more of a you know grassy field mud look but this is the old Tamiya uh, kit and I got it for really cheap at a local store uh, it's not local it's a national store but uh, my local hobby lobby and with the 40% off coupon for this thing I, I paid next to nothing really inexpensive kit but it was a lot of fun to use as a test bed for different techniques it was something I wanted to build just you know to kind of relax and you know no pressure kind of thing and it was a lot of fun built it straight out of the box I didn't change the jerry cans or anything it's got the funky weird you know old school simple uh, molded handles and stuff like that, but you know, I it was mainly a test bed for mud and for more um, weathering techniques using oils. But it was a fun kit to build. You know, if you ever want a quick, uh, easy build and generally really inexpensive, this one is right there with the um, Panzer II. They can be found just about anywhere, really cheap, and they're a lot of fun to build. No surprises as far as putting them together. Everything fit together like it's supposed to. Um, very clean, not a whole lot of seam lines or uh, 
flash to clean up. Uh, to me, it really takes care of their molds. It's apparent. But anyway, that is the M41 Walker Bulldog by Tamiya, kit number eight that I finished for 2017. All right, kit number nine was the old Monogram slash Ravel ME262 in 148 scale. Now, this kit was for the beginner series, and it was uh, an aircraft kit because I hadn't done an aircraft kit yet. And, you know, how to work with an older kit. There's some fit issues. I talked a lot about some uh, ways to fix fit issues. Not only in older kits, but in newer kits as well. Via shimming and putty and all this kind of stuff. And uh, I've never built a 262 before and I thought it'd be fun. Again, the kit was very inexpensive. Um, and it's the newer release by Ravel. Um, one thing I have to say I was kind of surprised with was the decals were actually pretty decent. There wasn't a whole lot of carrier film. And as you can see from the weathering, there's not a lot of, you know, uh, carrier film around the edge. So it turned out pretty nice. It was okay. I mean, I had some problems with it. I like, I lost the front landing gear. I don't know how I did it, but I lost the whole front landing gear. So I had to order another one cheap on eBay, which actually ended up being the original release by monogram in the white box and i'll eventually build that one too but it'll be a gear up aircraft because i used the, the landing gear on the front of this but you know it had a lot of it was quite challenging and i think it may have been a bit much for a beginner series kit uh, just from a lot of the things that i had to do to correct gaps and stuff like that i wasn't entirely successful on all of them but you know it is what it is, as people say. I also discussed about how to um, weight the front end of, of a kit that has the tricycle type landing gear, one in the front, two on the sides, to keep it from being a tail sitter. So I talked a little bit about that. So I think it was helpful, you know, for any beginners that watch this. Uh, did some bit of chipping and wear uh, on the uh, on the aircraft where the crew would walk. Um, I do remember one problem I did have with the decals. I just could not get, there's some air bubbles and silvering. No matter what I did, I could not get rid of that. And it's just, you know, it's one of those things that's, you know, part of building kits. You're going to run into problems like that. And, you know, it was fun. But, you know, I'll probably do another aircraft kit for the beginner series eventually. Something a little easier to build. And just talk about the stuff specific to aircraft, which is kind of what I was trying to do on here. But it was a fun kit. It was inexpensive. Um, took a long time to do, especially since I had to wait for the other part for the front. But in the end, you know, it turned out okay. And maybe the next one will be better. So that was kit number nine. Or, yeah, number nine. The ME262 by Ravel. All right. Kit number 10 was the M4 Early by Tamiya. Now this kit, I really had fun building this one. Um, added some extra stuff, did the figures, um, pretty much built it out of the box. There wasn't a whole lot I had to do to improve much on it. Um, again, I kept it real basic because this is one another one of those ones I wanted to do just for like, cause what seems to happen is I'll do one of my beginner series videos and it takes a lot of time and effort with all the building and the filming and the, um, or videoing and, uh, editing all that kind of stuff and it can get really wearisome so i just built this one just have fun with it i did you know talk about it on videos and stuff like that but it wasn't in detail stuff and had a lot of fun i just went with a dusty uh dusty look no mud i want again i wanted to keep it simple i used the uh, again i used some the dot oil filtering i used um Ultimate Modeling Products, Clay Wash again. Use some of the Vallejo fuel and oil stained stuff. As you can see, it's kind of shiny there to simulate its fuel spills. Uh, used uh, some, a mix of dry transfers and kit decals. And I just really had fun. Now, this particular vehicle, the M4 Early, 
I really like this particular version of the Sherman. The armor is a little bit more sloped than on, say, the M4, A3, or E8, anything like that. It's got, you know, this really sloped. It also has these armor plates in front of the driver's and radio operator's hatches. It has the small hatches as opposed that flip straight out, as you can see here, as opposed to the ones that kind of open at an angle. There's just a lot of features about this kit that I've always found interesting. And uh, again, it's a lot of fun. Great kit to build. It was relaxing. I had enjoyed it. And, you know, just more and more practicing of all of my uh, the techniques I'm trying to learn. And right here is a good, a good example of what solve a set can do to a decal put that decal on there there's all kinds of hinges and lines and grooves and i mean it just melts that down in there so it looks like it was actually painted on so really nice kit had a lot of fun building this one kit number 10 the tamiya m4 early that's one i can highly recommend because everything fit like a champ you know this extra armor on the side here it conformed perfectly to the turret I mean, no surprises, no hassles, just a lot of fun. So that was kit number 10. And this is the final kit that I completed for 2017. It is the Hobby Boss M4A376 Wet, which means it was the wet stowage vehicle. Now, as you can see, this one looks quite a bit different than the other ones I've done for a number of reasons. It's 148 scale, which I've not built 148 scale armor before. It's also in a whitewash winter scheme, which I have not done either. And you can't really tell it as much because of the whitewash, but I, that's this is the first one I added texture to the turret with Mr. Surfacer. So this is a whole lot of stuff. And I also went with a, a wet look mud situation on it. So this has a lot of firsts in it. Um, and it was a really nice kit. I saw it at my local Hobby Lobby. I had never, I didn't even know how Hobby Boss made 148 scale armor. I thought, hey, I'm going to give it a shot. It's very inexpensive. Thought it'd be fun for something for a change and to practice the whitewash for a kit I have coming up in the future. So it went together really well. Nice kit. No complaints. Um, fit together well. The paint worked good. And this is also the first kit that I tried large scale, or yeah, large scale uh, hairspray technique. Painted it in the olive drab, sprayed it with hairspray, and then put the uh, whitewash on it, and then just scrubbed away. And I really was pleasantly surprised at how it turned out for my first attempt. I really liked it. The, the texture came out nice on the turret. This is another one I did. Uh, um, a video on just talking about some of the stuff I was doing and I, I just liked the way it turned out and it had um, photo etch for the light guards which was really nice because they can be a little largish looking so it just turned out pretty nice it was a fun kit to build uh, the the wet effect that I went for actually worked and I didn't buy anything special for it I just used stuff I had on hand um, the tracks they actually look like they've been rolling through you know puddles and water and stuff and the mud you know it's, there's a mixture of dry and wet mud on it uh, wet closer down on the bottom drier higher up so you know fun kit hobby boss 148 scale m4a3 so that are those are all of the completed kits for 2017 now i have a few other kits that are in progress and I'm just going to briefly touch on those. And I'm going to start with the one that I've been working on the longest. First up is the Revell 132nd scale FW190F8. Now this one I've been working on for a while. I stopped because I'm at the part, um, the point where I need to prime it. And I've been waiting for cooler weather. Well I've got the cooler weather but I haven't had time to squeeze it in with all the other projects I've got going on. But it is... Uh, well, I've kind of got the box tape, so I don't want it to get all dusty. But all the major construction is done. All the control surfaces are separate, so I can paint them all. But, 
you know, this one, the only thing holding me back is just getting going on the primer. So I'll be doing that pretty soon. Uh, the next kit that I had started and I'm still working on and is actually part of my beginner series, which is building a model from a photograph, is the Tamiya M10 Tank Destroyer, which is a uh, 2016 tooling. It's a very nice kit. This is the photograph I'm doing. As you can, as you can see, most of the construction is done. I was waiting on some parts, namely the uh, Hedro device for it. But it's part of the beginner series, um, showing how to, you know, use photo reference to build a kit and a particular photo to replicate. So uh, that's that one. This one, it's it's nearing completion as far as the construction goes and the primary painting. And mainly the thing that stalled me out on that was waiting for this part. I was going to scratch build it, but I discovered that I was doing the wrong hedgerow cutter. So they had I was able to buy that one, so that'll save me some construction time. But that one's coming along nicely. Then the next one that I started and is in progress is the Asuka M4A1 mid-production. Uh, this is a kit, this particular type of Sherman I really dig. Uh, it's got the early small mantlet cover there. It's got the uh, suspension with the return roller on top instead of trailing behind, which is most common on Shermans. And I've started the weathering process on this. So basically all I have to do is weather it and get the tracks on it and it's a done deal. So that one's coming along and should be completed shortly. And then the last one I've got going on here is uh, the Bronco Stug 3. I'm doing this as a buddy build with my friend Peter Person in Sweden. Uh, he mentioned this in a video some months back. And uh, it looked like a really cool kit. I like Bronco kits. And I am working on this along with Peter Person. This is kind of a fun build. Got some photo etch and stuff. Now I am at, at a stopping point, and I'm going to talk about it in a, another video in the future. But I'm waiting for some tracks. Uh, the kit tracks, uh, the detail on them is really nice, but the assembly on them is atrocious. I just, um, it's not real fun to do. And I've done a lot of, well, not a lot, but I've done a few individual link tracks, and the way these are, I, I just really don't care for them. The pins that connect it connect the links together are just way too fragile and I'm just going to go a different direction so that is the other kit I have going and that's all the kits well I do have one other kit going there was a uh, T34 group build that I was a part of and I got the dragon kit uh, I can't remember which one it is I think it's called an OT3476 it's got a flamethrower on it and it that kit is just it's a nightmare nightmare to put together i mean the instructions are horrible a lot of the parts don't fit because it's got a broad range of sprues from newer kits to really old kits and it just kind of that one's on perma hold i've got that in a box down below and i may finish that but i don't include it in my projects um under construction so that's that so i've got four kits that I'm working on right now and uh, hopefully I'll be able to get some of those done so there you have it that's basically my recap for 2017 um, hopefully this video wasn't too long and it was at least interesting enough that uh, you made it this far if not well you know I don't blame you these things can get long at times but that's what I've got going on. Those are the kits that I got done. I almost did a kit per month, um, I realized. I have 11 kits completed for the year. Um, one of them I'd actually started in 2016, but I hadn't done that much on it, and that was the uh, Edward BF-109. But, you know, considering the amount of construction I've done on these kits that I've got, you know, I could have done 13 completes within the year if I didn't have all these other projects going. And rest assured, this is the last time I'm gonna have this many projects going at once. Um, I find frazzling at best, but 
So I'm going to get these four kits completed <clears throat> before I start any other kits. And as an introduction to the new year, I'll talk about some of the kits that I've got waiting in the wings uh, to be built. I, my stash is very small. Um, I think I have three, three kits. Uh, three new kits that have not been touched yet. So I, I, keep, I tend to keep my stash kind of low. I don't buy a lot of stuff and just let it sit. So that's that. That's uh, my completes for 2017 um, and the ones that I've started in 2017. So hopefully within the first month or two of the new year, 2018, I'll be able to add four kits to the shelf as completed. So Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this little recap of 2017, and uh, I look forward to seeing more uh, 2017 recaps from some of my other subscriptions. I've seen a few so far, and they've been really good, seeing other people's work. So that's it for now. If you have any questions or comments, uh, leave them in the comments section below, and I hope you all have a safe and happy new year. Uh, be careful. And I will see you all in 2018.